Well, we can do this first a short speech of five and uh, ten minutes explaining uh, how have you make your robot. Okay, so hello, we are from the Spanish team. The two teams. I'm going to start with Jose Pan, Julia, Luigi and me, Dominic. Um, we began making this robot, well, obviously by the base. We had many, many problems by building the base. And we had to start over again many times because we couldn't figure out um, how to actually structure the wheels and all this compartment down here, which is um, where the gears. After that, we, just, uh, we tried to make um, with the infrared sensor um, to detect the distance from any obstacle and maybe that way he could um, choose a path where there's no obstacles. However, we also found many, many troubles with that. Uh, so we tried a, a gyro sensor to determine the inclination of it. Um, ultimately, we decided to um, calculate some time and do it um, manually, but I think we did a good job. We also added many, like a light sensor here uh, for some specific um, uh, projects, yeah. And yeah, we have many, many um, programmation ideas and things that still aren't completely working, but I think with time we could develop them more. Okay, so we uh, we have like different programs that we have to do to, um, to kind of go over certain obstacles. Uh, the first one was, I think, the hardest one for us, uh, to go down the slope and then go back at it, because we tried making it like very, um, you know, adaptable to other surfaces so that we could um, put it in any different slope and it will work. So we tried it with the infrared and the gyroscope, however it was uh, very difficult and we still haven't figured that out completely. But um, I think this will, the first test is we, we can make this. Yeah, the, next, the next tests are like um, detecting some color, like a white stripe, a yellow stripe, sorry. So for that we have the, uh, the color sensor and the light sensor. And also, um, and, well, we had we had a touch sensor here, but I don't know why it's not here. Um, it's on the table there. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna use that touch sensor to detect any rocks in the way and kind of uh, trans and give it the information that there's someone there's something in the way, so that you would go back and try a different route. And yeah, I think that is it. Hello, we are the Spanish team number two with Cristo, Antonio, Ivan, and me. And I'm gonna explain like how was like the construction of this new this robot. Uh, the thing about uh, this robot, we started with another design, also uh, four wheels, but instead of gears, we were uh, thinking about like a strip. But it was it, it bring us some problems, so we changed it. Then we went for a three wheel robot. It was great, but it it had some trouble like with steering, so we decided for this that design without uh, with gears and four wheels. The problem about these Legos is that they're Legos and they're pretty limiting in some cases. That's why Dominic told us that, told that he, his team had some trouble building the base because it doesn't really not look like it, but it's actually very difficult because Legos, they are very simple pieces, so you cannot like make this robot as free as you want. You are limited by Legos. Also, sensors sometimes are a bit tricky. And like programming sometimes is kind of tedious because the sensor sometimes works, sometimes not. But, but, as you can see, our robot has two motors here and here. We have here a touch sensor in case he sits on it. And here he has like a, an ultrasonic sensor. sensor that is has another, another like gear system, as you can see here, so he can steer in case he needs to see something. And that sensor that we just uh, put it up, but it's supposed to be here in case he sees like any variation of, sun, uh, of light or color. And so to respond, and we'll, we have the exact same, same programming. Or robot, as far as I know, can do the first and the second one. I'm not sure. I, I think we no, can I think he can do almost every, every, uh, everything. And the cool thing I like about this sensor is we can like if they like change, we can like put it like turn around. turn around and it like flips like this, and it's like very comfortable when we're like changing it and stuff. So well, this is a robot. It's small, but it hits fights well. <laughs>
so our world will be first started with a very different rover, a uh, remote controlled vehicle. But when more of the um, specifications of what needed to be done came out, we knew that that vehicle wasn't going to do it. So we completely rebuilt the vehicle, we did it. And we used to have a solar panel on it, but <laughs> because we cut it now, it's a lot more powerful. There's too much uh, weight in the front, so if we accelerate and then stop, it'll just fall forward. <laughs> so, yeah, it used to run with like a 12 volt battery, but now we use <laughs> we'll probably 15. 15 volts into it, so it's a lot more powerful. piece of art <laughs> and was a piece of art because we we were building it endless nights from like 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and we didn't get we didn't measure the amount of time we spent on the electrical things and the main thing was our uh, stepper motors were too weak so we had to use gearboxes. The gearboxes were too weak, so the 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 wheels, wheels, yeah, the wheels are not good, are not tight enough. But it, it held like for about a few tests. Yeah. It was driving, it was lifting, and we had several blowouts, and it blew up like. Three or four times. <laughs> just something started heating up. Um, and it stopped working. Like wires heating up, boiling away. Uh, the camera blew up like two <laughs> minutes ago. Yeah, so. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We use nanotechnology. Are there no nano? <laughs> <laughs> and we used like PCBs to connect uh, all of them. Used camera to see where we are where we are, we were going uh, several sensors like UV sensor uh, UV pressure, the temperature, temperature sensor it was pressure. Oh, it was supposed to be plugged in it's plugged into the camera so when you see this display you see everything like, like every measure you can you can see in the display in real time but yeah. it doesn't work now it doesn't work yeah we were hoping we will fix it when we all arrive in Lithuania. So this is the robot. It started out being a lot bigger, but then the measurements came in, the limits for the size, and we had to compress it quite a bit. And that's why it's so compact. If you can, if you see in here, the boards they barely fit in there. Um, the connections are all made with jumpers. There were no custom-made PCBs. Um, at the moment, it's controlled by a remote, uh, but it also has some sensors that we can use, and if we program it to do so, we could have it make and drive autonomously. This here is also another sensor. It, is, it was supposed to go under here to collect a piece of dirt, of dirt, and then it has a color sensor inside that would detect the color of the dirt that it collected. Um, it can also transmit video directly uh, using an FPV system. Transmits it to the to a laptop or a computer. Uh, this remote was also custom made using an Arduino Mega and a shield for it. And in here is also an Arduino and two other boards which control the motors. So yeah, that's the 
rover. Can you explain the sensors? Uh, okay, the sensors. <coughs> this here is a UV sensor to sense the UV light. There's also a temperature and a pressure sensor, as all on the same board, and a luminosity sensor that measures the light in lux. And also here is a, a sonar to detect the distance it is from an object and to prevent it from crashing into something. The suspension system, it's also what is on the actual Curiosity rover, which is on Mars. It's a similar system, so it can go up slopes relatively easily and upstairs.